I am a sucker for any time I see a chunk of wood on the side of the road. I keep collecting these logs, thinking someday I'll find a use. I want to get into more sculptural stuff, and I think they have potential. I will admit that even though I've been woodworking for a very long time, I cannot identify a tree to save my life. So I have no idea what I've been collecting. This is one of those projects where I had a huge aha moment that completely changed the trajectory and vision for this in the most beautiful way possible. And this video is brought to us by Squarespace. To cut this down on the bandsaw safely, I needed a flat spot, so I ran it over the joiner a few times. I must have had this piece for a while because it's pretty dry on the inside, which is exactly what I want. And after that first piece fell off, it was revealed that this chunk of wood is a beautiful piece of hickory, which got me pretty excited. So after roughing out the four sides, I'll run this over my joiner without using the fence to get a perfectly flat surface. I can then take that flat surface and run it through the planer, which will create a parallel flat surface. I can then take one of those milled sides and run it up against the fence of my joiner to create a perpendicular face, which I can then take that surface in the planer for a parallel and square face. It is without a doubt a lot of work and there's a lot of waste and dust but it is worth it because this log was going to end up in somebody's fire pit and it turned out to be a stunning piece of hickory. The rest of the shaping is gonna be done on my little bandsaw here. And my limitation is the cutting height, which is about four and three quarters. So I gotta cut this down a little bit more and that's gonna max out the bandsaw, but this guy can handle it. So I drew up this football eyeball shape in Adobe Illustrator. It's not meant to be a football or an eyeball, it's just what came out of me at the time. So I'm attaching that printout to the top of the board and cutting out the outside shape on the bandsaw. The trick to cutting thick wood on a small bandsaw is, one, you need the right blade, link in the description, and two, cutting slow. Give the blade time to remove the waste and cut just outside of the line so we can sand down to the line in a later step. So the next thing I need to do is cut off what will be the back of the bandsaw box. What I didn't think about when drawing up the design is how dangerous this cut is. So I have to hot glue it into a cradle and then run it through the bandsaw. Otherwise, the teeth of the bandsaw blade will pull the front of the football down towards the table, bringing your hands up towards the blade. Very dangerous. I didn't get a nice clean cut on the bandsaw, so I'm running the body of the box and the back through the planer so everything is nice and flat. So the next thing I need to do is cut out the drawer. And I like to enter going with the grain so when we close that kerf later, it will be hidden. And for the drawer, you have to go really slow and cut right on the line. I think a lot of issues that people have is just pushing too fast through the blade. You'll get drift, you'll get a bad cut, and it's hard to follow the line. Just go as slow as you can.
So for the drawer, you cut off the face, you cut off the back, you scoop out the inside, and then you glue the three pieces back together. Again, this is a very dangerous shape to cut on the bandsaw, so I'm hot gluing some wedges on there to stabilize it. Making bandsaw boxes is how I got started in woodworking. In fact, I believe this is one of my first woodworking projects ever outside of high school shop class. When I got started, all the bandsaw boxes that I saw online had a very organic amoeba type shape. So I brought in my graphic design background and started making them with a little bit more geometry based design. And I made a ton of them. I caught the attention of a publisher and they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to write a book on bandsaw boxes. At this time, I was still working a full-time job for an ad agency and it blew my mind that somebody would ask me to write a book. All these years later, I'm still selling these books and I've written two other books with the same publisher. And the Bandsaw Box book has over 1,000 five-star ratings on Amazon. We have sold thousands of these and it's what got my name on the map and is one of the contributing factors of me quitting my job and doing this full-time. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with a little bit of ambition and a lot of luck. Life is crazy. So this is as far as I got, as far as what I had planned. I knew going into this that I was going to make some sort of legs. So a moment ago, I sketched up this idea and the thought would be to have three very long walnut legs. And this is actually like a floor standing art piece that happens to be some sort of bandsaw box. This part of the leg would be a walnut because I think walnut and hickory go very well together. And then the very top of the leg would be hickory. So it's almost like the, the legs were growing out of the unit in a very alien format. So that was one idea that I was just sketching up. And now while looking in the closet, I found this guy. I've had it at least six years. This is Buckeye Burl that I've had for a very long time. And I haven't used it because I'm always saving things for that special project. Maybe this is it, because look at this. By chance, it looks like it's eating this eyeball. And this becomes like a wall hanging unit instead. While I'm cutting up this amazing piece of Buckeye Burrow, I wanna to talk to you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. You might know Squarespace as a place to build and host your website, but it is so much more than that. If you've ever thought about turning your expertise into a course, Squarespace has the tools to help you create and sell your online courses. With customizable layouts, you can upload your videos, build engaging lessons, and even set up subscriptions or one-time fees. It's never been simpler to grow your business and connect with your audience. Squarespace now makes it incredibly easy to manage payments and invoicing all from one place. Whether you're selling products or services, you can handle everything from accepting payments via Apple Pay, Afterpay, and Clearpay to invoicing clients seamlessly. I have been using Squarespace for over 10 years and I can honestly say it keeps getting better and better. They take care of the technical stuff so you can focus on your ideas and creativity. So visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay. Now let's finish up this crazy bandsaw box. So I ended up tracing the shape of the bandsaw box onto a piece of plywood that got attached to the burl because it would have been hard to trace that shape onto the burl itself. I want the Buckeye burl to have a super high gloss finish 
and the hickory box to have more of a matte finish. That way there's some contrast and visual texture between the two pieces. So the Buckeye will get a super heavy coat of Total Boat Epoxy and the Hickory will receive my custom blend that I put on all my projects. Typically, there's a lot of sanding involved with bandsaw boxes because of their shape and that they're cut out with a bandsaw. I get around that by flocking the inside of the drawer as well as the inside of the box. So it covers up all the teeth marks and tightens up the fit between the drawer and the shell. And we had another aha moment with the offcut of the Buckeye. It's already the exact shape of the box. And so if I resaw a slice off, I can then glue that onto the front of the box. And it gives it this look like the burl is invading the hickory and giving it some visual glue between the two pieces. The two pieces got epoxied together. I then added my custom blend of finish to the Hickory. I have a video on the exact formula of this blend. I also sell this blend at cost to my Patreon members and my Patreon members only. I then added some hanging hardware on the back and called it a day. This took a complete 180 from where I thought it would end up. I am trying to be more free in the moment and let the project tell me what it wants. And I absolutely love how this came out. I know this is gonna be polarized and I know some people are not going to like this at all. And that's okay. I sell signed copies of my bandsaw box book on my website. You can get it much cheaper on Amazon. I also sell PDFs to bandsaw boxes that are not in the book. And I'll provide that PDF to my Patreon members. That is gonna wrap it up. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.